Hey everyone, I'm back with another constructed video. Today I am playing the deck that actually eliminated me from the SCG Open in Columbus. This is Mono Red, specifically Max McVitie's build. I looked at several Mono Red decks before playing this, and I like his, particularly because I think Rekindling Phoenix is excellent right now. A lot of people are just not prepared to deal with this card, and so I basically wanted to play a Mono Red deck with that. The rest of the deck is pretty stock. You have cheap creatures and spells with a little bit of late game top end in the form of Experimental Frenzy and Risk Factor. And Goblin Chain Whirler is just like the best card ever, so you play a bunch of those. The sideboard is interesting because there are a couple plans here. There is the Ghost Slightly Bigger plan with a Mountain and some uh, Resilient 4 drops and probably the other Risk Factor. This will often combo with the Interact with your opponent's creatures plan in Lava Coil and Fight with Fire. These are, if your opponent's going to be playing difficult to deal with cards like Lyra, I assume, you need to be able to clear them out. And then finally there's the Oh God I Don't Want to Lose to Tokens plan, which includes Fiery Cannonade. You probably will also be bringing in these 4-drops and the Mountain, and to do that, obviously you don't want cards like Viashino Pyromancer in your deck because then you're clearing your own creatures, and that doesn't seem very good. Uh, I am no stranger to turning red creatures sideways, but mostly I want to play this deck to just get a feel for how it goes, because I am the type of person who's also going to be brewing decks to play against it the whole format, and playing with a deck is really the best way to figure out what its weaknesses are and how to play against it. This deck is pretty simple, but very powerful, so I'll be back in a second with the matches. Okay, here we are against Iodized Salt for the first round. I am playing best of threes. I think actually this is a deck that would do better in best of ones than best of threes. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. But that I don't want the success of the deck to feel inflated because I played in a format that was better for it. You really need to see how this deck is able to do, even when it has to deal with the sideboarded games. Want to play a forest? Hmm. I think it is worth just uh, sacrificing the fanatical firebrand just to slow them down. I don't think that one damage was going to matter as much, but stopping a uh, a steel leaf champion from coming down next turn seems great. Drawing a mountain was pretty bad, but we've got some four drops in our deck, so we can deal with that. And these shocks should deal with anything they have while also boosting up our kin. Okay, they're playing green black. This deck is... I don't know. Okay. This is unfortunate because normally the giving us a land would be really bad for them, but we are already kind of flooded, so... Yeah. I mean, okay. Would really like to draw one of our experimental frenzies here. We would just start firing off red spells and... Let's see what opponent has here. Yeah, I think this matchup is probably better than Mono Green, because these decks aren't quite as good at blocking. But, I don't know. Okay. Go ahead and go to combat. Hmm, do we start firing spells off? I kind of want to, because it's extra damage, since it'll pump the Steamkin. And I think they're just going to remove this anyway. And the shocks aren't getting a whole lot better. There are probably some circumstances where I feel dumb for doing this, but yeah, getting them down to 8 seems pretty solid. Now this is a 4-4, it can attack through things they're likely to play. If they play a Ravenous Chupacabra, it's like, I don't know, was it really better? Oh, that is bad news. Okay, <laughs> this is the reason not to do what I just did. Oh man, main deck Wild Growth Walker is a beating. Oh god, we're so flooded. Oh boy, I'm really good at just getting beat up in the first games that I play. Yeah, I... Opponent's starting to run out of cards, but... If they trigger this even, like, once more, we basically can't win, much less twice or even more than that. That said, uh, we could always just play an experimental frenzy and start playing five cards a turn. Uh, we would run away with the game pretty fast. Or we can do that.
But apparently had nothing here? I mean, alright. Playing out lands both because they're good with the experimental frenzy. Yeah, I figured they had to have six drops, that's why they didn't do anything next turn. But yeah, uh, if we draw an experimental frenzy, we will want to have as many lands in play as possible. And also, it's reasonably likely that our opponent might have Burglar Rat in their deck. I suppose probably not, given how many of the two drops they're already playing. Okay, uh, this game is over. We did not draw very many non-land cards. That was pretty brutal. We did get punished because of the decision I made, but I think we also got a little unlucky. Okay, so... I think opponent's deck is one of those decks that is very bad at dealing with Rekindling Phoenix. I definitely think we want that. Do we want an extra one of these type of effects? This card's really bad against Ravenous Chupacabra, so I don't think so. I don't think we need to interact with their creatures. So it's really just if I want the Frenzy and then I need some cuts. I think Shock is probably pretty marginal. I don't think they're going to have a lot of good targets for that. And... Is it Heresy to cut the Chain Whirler, especially against the, uh, the Llanowar Elf stack? Yeah, I don't think that's exactly where I want to be. Yeah, yeah, cutting a couple shocks for a couple phoenixes. Curve is still relatively low. I think I don't think we need to bring in the mountain. Oh, yeah. So this is irritating. You may have noticed that there is no mountain up here. For some reason in Magic Arena, if you're sideboarding a land, as soon as you add a different card from your sideboard to your deck, the land in your sideboard vanishes. So you can't board in your land anymore. I had forgotten about that bug until just now. It's really irritating. Okay, I think this hand is good. We don't have a wizard to make our lightning on, but we've got a lot in our deck, and we do have a lightning strike. Oh. Alright, time to go fast. At least this hand isn't likely to flood out. The one card that this deck is not playing that a lot of similar decks do is, uh, Sweet. This is actually really good because then next turn we'll be able to play it plus lightning something to double pump our steamkin. Yeah, the one card that this deck is not playing that other mono red decks do is the Flame of Keld. Flame of Keld is quite powerful, but I don't know that this deck necessarily wants it. Okay. That is a good thing to know about. Hmm. How do we want to get rid of Branch Walker? I think we're going to... Hmm. Is it important to kill this and get in for a couple damage this turn? I don't actually know that it is. I think we want to maximize our Steamkins. There are no one mana Explore creatures that our opponent could be playing, so we will have a turn. Like, we can afford to tap out this turn and we'll still be able to hold up our Lightning Bolt effects for this. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. I'm not going to attack with either of my creatures here. I'm just going to take the turn off to really build up our board. I don't know, they might have like a golden demise here and then I'd feel really dumb, but I don't think so. Doesn't seem what seem to be what our opponent's deck is doing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to... Get rid of this right now. Okay. They're probably going to bin that because it's really bad right now. Okay. Let's go ahead. I'm going to use the Wizard's Lightning. It's the more efficient spell, but it's also the only one that can get turned off. So it's more of a liability to have it. Whereas Lightning Strike always attacks for the same amount. Not using Lightning Strike here, because I want to really make sure that this dies before they get to gain life with it. We would be putting them to 6, that's not really worth it, compared to how badly we're going to lose the game if this gets to gain them a bunch of life. Okay. That's kind of bad news, but... We might still be okay. Hmm. 
So I think we play this, just because it bumps this up to a 4-4. Four four. Then we'll go ahead and go to combat, and I'm just going to attack with my 4-4. Four four. Don't need to throw away one of these creatures for just one damage. Let's see what opponent does here. This game is going to be close. Uh, I think we've got a very good chance, but there are draws that they can have that will just, like, kill our steam can and we don't get to finish off the game. Okay, they go ahead and take a bunch of damage. Pass the turn. I think a likely play here is Wild Growth Walker plus, like, a Jade Light Ranger or some other Explore creature. That we can definitely can beat because we will Lightning Strike down their thing and then we still have some pressure on board. We could use to draw something. Okay, Wild Growth Rocker resolves. They played another Swamp instead of the Forest that we knew about, and they can't Jade Light Ranger here. Notably, yeah. Go ahead, Lightning Strike this. This is going to put the Lava Runner up to a 2-2. And again, I'm just going to get this off the board. I don't want it to go up to a 3-2. Okay, opponent's down to three cards, and one of them's a forest. We're attacking for lethal. They have to either trade or chump. And now we're just attacking for lethal. Cool. Okay, like I said, close game, but we had just enough to finish it out. And this is a that game is a good example of why Rekindling Phoenix is so good here. Because... We were able to finish it out anyway, but even if we weren't, if we'd just stuck a Phoenix on that last turn, they were already so far behind that dealing with the rest of our board and also getting rid of this Phoenix is just not really an option. That There's basically nothing that they could have to get them out of that spot. Which is fine by me. Okay. Last hand was pretty good, but slightly awkward. We had to do We had to take that turn off from attacking to set everything up. Sand is kind of the same. We might actually use the mana mode on Runaway Steamkin to play some of our cards, but I think this hand's very good. Okay. This hand is a little in danger of not being aggressive enough. Like, if we don't hit a third land, we're going to stall out for a little while just playing really mopey cards. But I don't even mind that because our late game cards are so good here. Okay, that is really bad news, and we don't have a way to deal with it. So, we're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> that's that's all there is to say about that. Could play a Jade Light Ranger here, and that's like kind of lights out. Ugh. Them having these in the main deck makes this matchup a lot worse for us. Also, we just haven't drawn that many Lightning Strike effects. Yeah, yeah. Also, them seeing Wild Ghost Walkers every game has not been helpful. This will go up to a 3-2, so we can't even Chain Whirler it to death. That's kind of gross. Let's see how aggressive they want to get here. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay, we've drawn enough lands to do what we want to do. Question is, do we Steamkin, or do we just get down the Chain Whirler? Makes it kind of hard for them to attack if we get this down. Hmm. This is an interesting question. I think it is the Chain Whirler. If they next turn play out a bunch of X1s, I'm going to feel dumb, but I think I now just want to slow the game down a little bit. Because if I can do that, then I can stick Phoenix, and no matter how much life they gain, Phoenix will kill them eventually if they can't close the game against us. One has an overgrown tomb in hand. They've got a lot of cards. But our hand isn't bad, so... I think we're probably... Oh. Huh. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, so next turn I'm probably going to play the Phoenix, because that'll just be really difficult for them to deal with. Then the turn after that I can Steamkin into Risk Factor. Let's see if they want to attack with this yet. 
They definitely shouldn't just attack with Jade Light Ranger, yeah. Ooh. Well, that's kind of awesome. Uh, suddenly, we're even more in this game. Because even if opponent's gaining a lot of life, they can't keep up with us playing two, three, four cards a turn. That's just not reasonable. Well, <laughs> until they do that. Oh my. Opponent's doing a lot of different things. I, in general, don't think a lot of these choices are actually that good. Uh, for instance, like playing Lana Worlds in this deck, I think is really mopey. You want all your cards to generate value. You don't want a Mana Dork. But here we are. So, uh, we're going to die real fast to this, but I think our best plan is still just to play this Runaway Steamkin. This is an instant, so we can do it whenever we want. I think we are still just going to pass the turn. Notably, this is not a combo. <laughs> if you get down Experimental Frenzy, Risk Factor is really bad. Because they'll just have you draw cards and you, then you can't play the cards that are in your hand. And, oof. That's not great. Notably, um, I'll just take a few hits from this Doom Whisperer. I don't think that's a big deal. But then after a while... Uh, okay, this is a weird time to do that. We can start uh, taking a lot less damage because Rekindling Phoenix can soak three at a time. Since it'll just die and then come back. But I don't think we have to do that yet. No blockers. Waiting on the risk factor, they can just keep paying life if they want, and I'm totally fine with them going low. Yeah, I was gonna say, at that said though, they're not gonna go that low. This was just really bad for us. We needed one of our lightning bolt effect. Oh my god, that's brutal. Yep, yep. We kind of need this experimental frenzy to stall the game out. Like, maybe find us another phoenix and just have the board locked down. I suppose I could have firebranded that other thing, but I'm I want to keep the option open of drawing another firebrand and uh teaming up Phoenix and double firebrand to kill the Doom Whisperer. This is also the part in the game where Steamkin is fantastic, because if we experimental frenzy and start casting spells, then we can use it to make mana and just like keep going off the top of our deck. Okay. Let's see. That's a little gross. I think we're just gonna pass. It sucks that we can't get this down, but I think we're gonna try to Phoenix and Lightning Strike to kill Doom Whisperer. Well, I'm starting to run out of cards, so... Uh, I think we might actually be able to win the long game against the value deck, which is kind of insane. We'll see. I think we're like... I don't know, maybe 40% to win the game. I think they're advantaged because anything they draw is good for us, or good for them. Like, right now this Wild Growth Walker isn't that scary because we can just chump it forever with Rekindling Phoenix, but then if they ever have a removal spell, we lose our Phoenix. Okay. Let's go ahead and block. I'm gonna go ahead and knock that down. I'm gonna chump here. I'm gonna block there and look to Lightning Strike it see what they have here. Uh, then I will Firebrand and shoot them, because no point in having that block. For strike damage. Yep. And we'll take a little bit here. But if it gets this off the table, then I think we're more than fine. Like, this Jade Light Ranger isn't a threat anymore, because it'll just keep attacking into Chain Whirler. And they might have been just doing this if they've got, like, a Chupacabra in hand. They're just looking to kill the egg and make Phoenix stop coming back. But even that I think we could come back from. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kill this. <laughs> 
This is very bad for us. We're just going to die to this wild growth walker very quickly. Need like another phoenix here. That is not a phoenix. We're just dead. Well, that is downright unfortunate. Uh, I think this matchup's really good, but opponent really didn't want to lose to Mono Red. They were playing a bunch of cards to make this matchup better at the expense of control and things like that. So we'll get right back into the next round. All right, getting right back into it. Yeah. Uh, that BG matchup. Ugh. I'm on the play. This hand doesn't have much action. I think we can do better. Yeah, this is better. It's a little slower, but we have a solid mix of creatures and stuff to do and not too many lands. Yeah, I think if you were worried about the BG matchup, if you thought that was going to see... Huh, do I keep third land? I don't think so. We can cast everything in our hand already. Yeah, if you're worried about the BG matchup, I think you should play the Flame of Keld version. I think the Phoenixes are good, but you can just get overwhelmed even with them. I think your best chance of beating them is to just flame of Keld and just blow them up. Well, I'm glad we bought him the land. This card is a little awkward, because, like, it really isn't that impressive, but damn do they add up. Like, I can just feel like you're getting buried in the unrelenting pressure of two ones that also dome you. Alright, don't play anything too scary. That's annoying, but not too scary. This is a case where Wizard's Lightning is great. Go ahead, shoot down their first threat creature. And go ahead and get in for some damage. Hopefully they don't have a history of Banalia here. That would be very bad for us. This is an interesting choice. I mean, it's a really good defensive creature, and it's good if you're attacking with... Ew another thing that we have to shoot down. We have drawn nothing but lands. Okay. Holy crap. This might not just, this might just not be the mono red player's day. That is. Bottom a land and then three lands in a row in three cards is ugly. Still, that's why we put experimental frenzy in our deck. We might just Draw that and play it and win the game very easily if they can't deal with us casting a million cards a turn. Legion Warboss not good on this board. Oh, that's very good on this board though. Gross. Ugh. Every player our opponent has made has been really good against Viashino Pyromancer. Huh. Do I play out the fifth land or do I save it to pitch to a later risk factor? I'm gonna go ahead and get in here. They'll eat one of my guys, but crucially, it will put them down to eight. So they can't just take both risk factors. They will have to let us draw cards off of one of them. That said, next turn they might just play Lyra and the game's over because Aurelia will become a five power lifelink creature hitting us. Hopefully, that doesn't happen. There was fifth land. Please don't play a big angel. Okay, this is a lot more beatable. Probably gonna buff herself. Yep. Ew, gross, and she's gonna get to mentor the goblin. So this is hitting us for six. We're gonna die really fast. Resolves, sure. I really like the effect from Mentor. It's just very satisfying, like, as the metal comes out. Alright, let's see what they do. Casting this in, as an instant, because I want them to be working with as little information as possible. I want them to think they're at 8, not 4, as they play out their turn. Hmm. 
Is this worth playing out? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to cast this, and I'm going to pitch the mountain. They have to let us draw three cards here, so we will see what we can do. I the the chain whirler will be good later, but I think I just want to get this down right now. Okay. So here we have a kill if they don't gain life. So I'm just going to pass and look to block and hopefully not die. And then I can lightning strike them down to one and chain whirler for, for the kill. Hmm. Am I dead if they have a lightning strike? Be taking two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven. I'm not dead on board. They'll need something else to kill me. So I have this game unless they've got something good. Which that said, they could easily just have a lightning strike and kill me. The math, if it wasn't clear, Legion War Boss is going to make another goblin, and then War Boss can mentor that goblin. So one, two, three, four. Uh oh, does this kill me? I don't think so. I don't think that's enough for more damage. That is going to kill me. Holy crap. Is this a goblin's deck? What do they even name? Yeah, goblin. Okay, now I'm dead. You Wait. Can I live if I lightning strike something? Oh, I didn't have the stop on their main phase anyway, so... Yeah, I'm super dead. Wow. Alright. I was not expecting that. Oh boy. So, red white stuff. Fiery cannonade seems great. Uh, for that reason, I will cut probably the pyromancers. Then I also want some fight with fires, both for Aurelia and Lyra. Damn it, I didn't board in the mountain. Oh, that's so irritating. Yeah, now I'm just stuck not being able to play the mountain that I want. Ew. Take out a risk factor. I don't think that's. I don't think we're a pure burn game anymore. If we're focusing on being able to sweep them. Yeah, this will have to do. Ugh. Viewers at home, if you sideboard a mountain, think through all your changes before making any. Then board in the mountain first, and then make everything else. Also, report the bug because I've reported it several times and it hasn't been fixed yet. But maybe they've got. Other things on their priority list. It's just really irritating that you can't sideboard correctly. Uh, sure. One, two, three, burn spell. We don't have a wizard, but... This is like the worst wizard's lightning deck ever. There are just not that many wizards in this deck, and we cut a couple of them. In the Pyromancers. That said, it's not that bad. Like... We have a lot of wizards, so it will often be Lightning Bolt, and even when it's not, Open Fire is pretty bad, but it is not the worst fail case that's ever happened. It's like, slightly worse than Silumgar's Scorn, how that was Counterspell or Cancel, cancel depending. Okay, I don't mind another Chain Whirler. Go ahead and attack. I'm gonna shock my firebrand. They should wait until after I attack if that's what they're gonna do. Because if they shocked it right there, I get to ping them for one. If they do shock my firebrand, they're going to be sad that they did not save it for runaway steamkin. This is a much scarier creature. Hmm. If they play the uh, two-two first strike guy. Then we can Chain Whirler and then Firebrand it down. Yeah, they did have the shock. Hopefully they'll just play like the Swift Blade Vindicator, the Double Strike Trample thingy. Go ahead and get in for one. Fanatical Firebrand is okay. Like it does it does what you need it to do, but it's really unimpressive. I'm just playing a Chain Whirler here because we've got a second one and we just want to use our mana efficiently. This will attack really well into basically anything they could have next turn. Now, Chain Whirler even attacks well into, like, Aurelia. Okay, just a strike. 
they seem to have a very controlling hand. Because uh, Aurelia is a 2-5, and so you let the Chain Whirler deal first strike damage, and then you Wizard's Lightning her down. <sighs> this card again? This is really irritating. Like, this card is so good against what we're doing. It's possible... Oh my god. That's disgusting. Hmm. It might be, honestly, that you're just not supposed to play Mono Red anymore. Mono Red had a good showing in the first week and was very good online. And maybe everyone's just super adapted and you're going to have a really tough time killing people in this new format. I'm going to finish this match and play another one anyway, but... Yeah, the conclusion might be that you just don't want to play this deck anymore. It was a really good week one. If people figure out how to adapt, like... that. This is not acceptable into what our opponent's doing here. Yeah, like, this is just time walk on this board. We're even taking damage because Militia Bugler has Vigilance. And then this game, like, we boarded in Fiery Cannonades. Oh my god, Ugh, this hand is so awkward. I think I made a mistake last turn. I think I was supposed to play another Chain Whirler rather than the Runaway Steamkin. Because we knew they had Aurelia in their hand, and I just gave the speech about how Chain Whirler can attack into Aurelia, and Steamkin cannot. But yeah, like this... This looks so bad against this. It, it's just ridiculous how bad this card is. That is a lot of spot removal cards. As soon as opponent draws a fourth land, we're kind of just dead. Take our damage. My turn. Oh dear. Yeah, this is a a brutal mix of opponents being very prepared for what we're doing, and our deck just not doing us favors. Like I said, there are also other builds of Mono Red, so it's also possible that this is just. This was a more experimental week one list, and there are better things to be doing. I don't know. It felt really good while it was beating me up, but... Again, maybe I just wasn't set up well enough to beat Mono Red. Wow, that is... <laughs> this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> that is... Opponent has cast six spells, and five of them are spot removal. <laughs> We've barely drawn six spells. <laughs> We've drawn exactly six spells. My turn. Yuck. Like, I guess we go ahead and get this out of the way. Really wanted to develop a board so that we could, like, lightning down that guy and actually attack for a real amount of damage, but... I guess we just hope that they have Aurelia and, like, nothing else going on. We can... And yeah, we're gonna get to burn it down and punch them some more, but... We just don't have enough pressure. Ugh, Steamkin. Again, you just... Four lands has been so awkward here. We gotta kill this, though. Uh, she's just going to murder us way too fast. We were already getting a little low. Another another Aurelia here is basically game over. It's not a lot better. All the two threes against our deck with Goblin Pikers is so gross. Hmm. Can we just play this and pass? Like again, if we just Wizards Lightning this down and hit them for one, that's that's not enough damage. We need to start building a board. Okay, yep. God, and this sucks. There's like nothing we can draw to actually make next turn good. I guess like a Viashino Pyromancer, we can shoot this for three, dome them for two, hit them for one, but... God, if they don't even play anything here, we can't even Wizards Lightning this thing, because they're just threatening to pump it.
All right. Well, go ahead and play the Goblin Chain Whirler. And I don't even think I'm actually going to attack with this Firebrand here. Because what I can do is this will hold off their attacker then. Because if they attack with this, even if they pump up to a 3-4, we can get the first strike damage with Chain Whirler and then Firebrand kills it. Uh, we can get in with our new Lava Runner friend here. Want it down to two cards. If they're not very good, we have a decent shot at this. Okay, sixth land. Don't think that's especially meaningful out of their deck. Ixalan's binding, huh? This is fine. I, yeah, they're gonna hit the Chain Whirler. They can either race us, which is bad for them because we're ahead and attacking for more, or they can leave it back to block, which... Ooh. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that. That needs to go away right now. Just... Yeah. Uh-huh. They weren't gonna be able to mentor it this turn, so I guess maybe it's technically better to wait, but... This, if this gets mentored even once, it's just way too big of a threat. Alright, so now both players are at nothing. We both have decent cards for a game that's going late. I'm ahead on board and life. Could be worse. Please don't play something like that. Oh god. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and shock the boar boss. And again, we're still ahead on board and on life. So, holding pattern. Let's see. That was the perfect draw again, just like it was the turn before. Holy crap. Huh, they didn't attack with the other one. That's weird. Alright, well, this was a good draw ourselves. Uh, I'm not going to attack yet. I think it just gets chumped, and I'd rather have this on defense for the moment. Yeah, Rekindling Phoenix. Really good card. Okay. Opponent now threatening to just attack and murder us. We'll see how they choose to attack here. I was going to say, they have to attack with the war boss, or else our blocks are just super free. But then, if they do, our blocks are still very good. So I'm going to go ahead and block one of the 1-1s. One -ones. We can afford to take three here. Phoenix just eats the war boss. And I believe that is... Yeah, that's lethal. I was going to say haste creature or any removal spell is lethal there. Okay, I thought we were super dead, but we pulled that one out. Uh, got a little lucky that they were screwed long enough that we didn't just lose to the Aurelia. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and board this mountain in now while I can. <laughs> Get out that last risk factor. Again, I don't think that's what we want to be doing here. Yeah. We got lucky. Huh. Maybe I'm supposed to board down Wizard's Lightning since we cut the Pyromancers. We just don't really have enough Wizards anymore. That's an interesting question. I think they're still probably good enough. They're just a burn spell that can be targeted at their creatures or just kill them. But I could see an argument for either that or maybe I'm just not supposed to cut the Pyromancers. Maybe I'm supposed to cut like Steamkins or something. Keep up my wizard count. I don't even hate that. Yeah, I should have thought longer about sideboarding. I think if I had really thought about it with how much spot removal they had... I don't think a Steamkin is ever likely to really get going and do what we want it to. So I should have the Pyromancers who are guaranteed value with dealing some damage to them and also make our Wizards Lightnings better. That said, maybe this game they go crazy with the Legion War Bosses and I'm going to have Fiery Cannonade and feel like a genius for not having the Pyromancers in my deck. But you never know. <laughs> you don't know if that's how that's going to go. On the draw, this is too bad. It doesn't have a real threat. It only has the one land. 
I think I do want lots of burn spells for things like Legion War Boss. But maybe open fires is too many. Sand is better. Do not need a third chain warrior. Oh, leads on mountain. The way it paused there makes me think they have a spell. They probably have a shock. Which is fine. Whatever. They shock our one drop. Yeah, for sure. Goodbye, G2 Lava Runner. Would love to draw like a steam can or a removal spell here. Have something to do on two. I think Rekindling Phoenix looked really good against their deck. They basically have Ixalan's Binding, and that's like it. Okay, well, we're guaranteed our fourth land. Bonus deck can do a lot of scary things, like a History of Banalia or Legion Warboss here would be pretty bad news. Technically, neither of those are great against a 3-3 first strike, but they showed so much removal that we can't count on this guy actually getting to block. I'd be interested to look at my opponent's mana. They've had a bunch of... What? They just missed hitting us for one extra damage if they... Two, actually, because it would have been mentored by the stalwart. They really should have played that pre-combat. Yeah. Opponent has led on a bunch of mountains early. I don't know how many basic planes they have. They might not have enough sources for History of Benalia, honestly. Like, you need a lot to consistently cast a one white white card. Oh, please don't Ixalan's binding me. Okay, that is more bearable. We're going to take a lot of damage here. What I will probably do, actually, instead of playing the Phoenix, I will probably Chain Whirler plus Firebrand the War Boss to get that out of the way. Only one of these is actually going to work because its power becomes too big. Okay, yeah, so, going to go ahead and Chain Whirler, then Firebrand, finish off the War Boss. Now they need a removal spell or they can't attack at all, and even if they have the removal spell, like, it's not, it's not that good. Like, they're hitting me for four and I'm going to get my Phoenix down. This game could go poorly. Like, if they play an Aurelia here, we have to take a turn off to fight with Fire It, and we're taking a big chunk of damage, but... That is beatable. Ah, and it whiffs. That is excellent. Sweet. Opponent doesn't really have attacks here. Yep, cool. Let's see... We don't have any spells in the yard, so this is not great at the moment. I'm just going to play my Phoenix out. Blocks really well and can start pressuring them. Both are things that we need. I like having Fight with Fire here. The, the most devastating card they could play is Lyra Dawnbringer, and that's just not very good against what we're doing. That's a close second. Oof, jeez. Okay. So, how do we go about... The fact that this guy will have uh, Get Beggar next turn is cool. What is the best way to go about attacking here? Hmm. We attack with both. They could throw everything under the Chain Whirler, and then we only get to Lightning Strike down one, kill another, and then he dies. That's not great. I think we just need to attack with the Phoenix for now. And then play the Lava Runner out. We can reevaluate and Lightning Strike something in a little bit. Opponent's got two blanks in their hand. One of them is probably a land, because they played a land off the top and then didn't do anything. Okay, Boris Challenger. Okay. Opponent's attack's still very bad. They just don't attack into Chain Whirler well. This game could be rough. We need to try to finish it with our Phoenix. Okay. So, going to go ahead 
I'm actually going to Lightning Strike this Boros Challenger. We're going to take a bit of damage here, but I really think it's important to get, all, get that off the board. Oh, and we don't have two spells yet, so this block is still bad. So yeah, I'm actually going to take four. I want to get this thing dead. The first strike is really annoying. Okay, so we need to just start snapping these off. That's fine. Now this is a 2-2, so we have great blocks. Oh wait, no, not all attack. Just the Phoenix. Cool. Like trade here, eat the Bugler. There's not really a whole lot they can do about that. Okay. Hopefully there's another land right here, so they just can't do anything this turn. Yeah, the way they paused makes me think that they probably have a land right here, and they were going to look to possibly sacrifice Experimental Frenzy. Or have it destroy itself, so that then they can play these three cards that they have in hand. Ah, no. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good card to have on top. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead again, just snap one of these off. We're never hitting the kicker. That's just not a real thing. And we just got to make it a race. This is way too much card advantage for us to try to play a long game. I'm going to hit them down to six. Now any uh, burn spell finishes the game. Ugh. Yeah, that's a lot of Legion War bosses. I'm going to take three here. Oh, please don't have an Exxon's Binding. Oh my god, that's so good. Jeez. Oof, I really wish we could draw our copies of Experimental Frenzy. They, uh, they would have been excellent here. But it's just not how it goes. Come on. You're attacking with both creatures. Play a little faster. And down to five. That lava coil is probably the end. There's not really anything that could be on top to save us. Definitely not that. Okay, another brutal loss. I'm going to play another match because it definitely deserves at least three matches. But like I said, this may not be the time to be playing Mono Red. All right, third and final match. Hopefully play against something that is not just completely engineered to destroy... Red. Also, I'd appreciate if we didn't have to mulligan so much. Okay, this hand is great. Even if we miss on lands, we can go Lava Runner, Pyromancer, Lava Runner, Lightning. Just really clear out their stuff and hit a lot. We go first, too, so being on the play is great. Opponent mulling over there, seven. It's funny that the same artist did both of these very red cards, even though they weren't in the same uh, set. Hmm. Their hand is very close, or they're AFK or something. That's fine. Let's see, what would our ideal draw look like? Maybe like that? It's another spell? Yeah. <laughs> That's... I suppose another Wizard's Lightning would be slightly better, but... You gonna shock my guy? Seems relatively likely. No, okay. Maybe they have an Opt? Opt is the only other card I can re yeah, think of that would make this make sense. I am definitely fine with Opt. Opt does not deal with our board. Oh, please don't have, like, main deck Fiery Cannonade. We will lose to that. Okay, so what is our best play here? Probably to attack for three, play out our one drops, and then next turn, hopefully we draw a land to do both of these and power up our Lava Runners. Oh, that was dumb. I missed a damage here. This has haste. I 
I got into the thinking that this one wasn't going to have haste, and so didn't realize that this does. They might be looking to counter here. They're leaving Essence Scatter up. If opponent lives at one, it is just completely my fault. Anticipate. Okay, that's a lot of blue card selection without actually any card advantage. Like I said, please no main deck fire cannonade. We are not able to beat that. Okay, Enigma Drake though, we can in fact beat. Perfect. So what we are going to do here is we're going to attack first, because any of our creatures can trade with it. So we are going to go ahead and Lightning Strike the Enigma Drake. Then we are going to Wizards Lightning our opponent. Yeah, we got him down to four and we've got five on board. Sweet. Okay. It's a fine card, but not good enough. Oh, I accidentally clicked through my turn. Oops. Sorry, opponent. I didn't mean to slow roll. I just got too antsy with the clicking. Now it is... Okay. I don't have to look like a jerk and just EOT shock them after clicking through when they were tapped out. Whew, that was a little ugly. So... Are we boarding in our mountain? Hmm. I think opponent is likely to be boarding in Fiery Cannonade. Fanatical Firebrand is like pretty bad. It doesn't really hit anything. Oh, the mountain vanishes when you board cards out too? Oh, that is, that is gross. So yeah, I think we're boarding these cards in. Gonna go a little bigger. Boarded the Firebrands out. And I think there's some argument for like Lava Coil or Fight with Fire because they're going to have a lot of four toughness creatures in their Drakes. When I was playing Enigma Drake, they're almost certainly playing Crackling Drake as well. So yeah, I think I'm going to board out a couple shocks and board in the Lava Coils. So it's to 60. Again, I would love to have the Mountain in here. We upped our curve significantly, but that's MTG Arena. It is an open beta. There will be problems with the software. Hopefully we'll just draw enough lands and win anyway. One goes first. Uh, his hand like can't beat a cannonade ever, but these steamkins are going to be sweet. One going to six. Let's see what they're made of. Mountain. All right. We need one more spell for Lava Runner to be good. And unfortunately, this is this cannot be aimed at their face. So if they don't play like a Drake or something, this just this doesn't count. Okay. Bono down to not very many cards. Mulling on the play really hurts as far as that's concerned. But we shall see. If opponent is playing exactly the deck that like saffron olive was there's very few counters okay huh. that is interesting this is really good with the drakes but okay cool no drake yet Let's see they might have another removal spell for our steamkin that's fine I'm gonna go ahead and do this it's playing into Cannonade, but also playing around it, because it buffs this Steamkin up to 3, so they can't Cannonade it down anymore. They might just have a Lightning Strike here, that's fine. No, Radical Idea pitching Niv-Mizzet, damn. Uh, the 6-drop Dragon Wizard is a little ambitious against what we're doing. Yeah, okay. So obviously this is card advantage, even if we kill it, they already got to draw a card off of it. But that's fine. Only one spell in the yard. We're not going to double Lava Coil, so I'm not actually going to play this Gito Ro Lava Runner. I'm just going to kill this thing and hit them for a lot of damage. Oh, opponent just concedes. Yeah, 
the, we did the mono red thing. Our sideboarding didn't matter. <laughs> we drew enough lands. Okay, so... Hmm. Thoughts on the deck. Like we saw, those first two opponents were really prepared for mono red. You, you don't put Wild Growth Walker in your main deck because you expect to play against, I don't know, blue-white control. You do it because you want to beat what we were doing. And the second opponent had a lot of first strike, a lot of low power, high toughness creatures that are good at blocking. They had all the removal in the world, including a lot of exile. And we struggled. We got beaten by those decks pretty badly. The next opponent, though, was not prepared. They wanted to play a grindy spell-based game, and we just ran them over with red cards. So I think the deck did what it's going to do. If people want to beat you, there's not a lot that you can do about that. So maybe not the best deck to be playing right now. Anyway... If you liked this content and want to see more like it, see what I think are the good decks as the format evolves, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button. It helps other people see the content and helps the whole thing to grow. Alright, talk to you guys next time.